When most think of Omega, they think of the Speedmaster, the Railmaster, and the Seamaster. The Seamaster is definitely one of the most iconic dive watches right after the Rolex Submariner, and with very good reason. However, when we think of the Seamaster, we tend to think of the 1994 edition, even though the Seamaster has been around since 1948. So to keep it relevant for today's topic, we're gonna focus on the 1994 design, and in my opinion, out of all the Seamasters, this is the best one they've ever released, and I don't think they can make a better one. This is definitely one of the best they've ever created. So from a marketing standpoint, it seems like a very simple equation. Pick an extremely popular movie, add product placement that will be significant to the movie, which in this case is the Omega Seamaster, and that watch will be extremely desirable. So what happened? It seems like the only one that was really popular was the very first one. Well, what happened was, and to put it nicely, every single James Bond piece after that was a little too gimmicky. You had dials with swirls, you had hands with really big 007s on them, and of course, limited edition after another. People really enjoyed the first one because the marketing was subtle, but when you have a really big 007 in the hand staring at you every time you check the time, it gets old. I digress. I did mention that I wasn't gonna touch too much on Bond, but that was important to know to completely understand why this one is actually a winner. So what we have in front of us is the new non-limited edition, yes, I said it, non-limited edition Omega Seamaster Bond. If Omega didn't tell us that this was meant for the movie, we all would have just associated the piece as a tribute to military dive watches, which is probably the plan for the product placement of this piece in the movie, but I'm not 100% sure. What I do know is this is definitely a military inspired dive watch. The really cool thing about this watch is Everything about it screams tool watch. It definitely doesn't feel like an extremely luxurious watch. It actually feels like something that would survive anything you throw at it, which is actually pretty cool. Now, the first thing you realize when you have this watch in hand is you're going to be surprised by how light the watch actually is. And that's because the watch is constructed of grade 2 titanium, which makes it quite comfortable on the wrist. Now, just because it's light doesn't mean it feels cheap. The watch definitely feels extremely solid and well constructed. Now when taking a closer look at this dial, the first thing you realize is they removed the wave pattern and the ceramic dial. I'm personally a big fan of this cleaner dial, it gives it a more versatile aesthetic and it's a little bit more timeless in my honest opinion. Now that matte dial gives it a very Thule aesthetic which I'm really happy that they did that. Also, if you look at the hands, it has a brushed finishing, which is absolutely stunning. That is probably my favorite part about this watch. Now, Omega decided to go with a matte anodized aluminum dial made so that it could age with time. Now, for those who aren't fans of vintage watches, you might want to just go with the regular production. But for those who want something modern with all the goods that make vintage watches special, this could be the watch for you. Now allow me to get the specifications of this watch out of the way. The watch is definitely bigger at 42mm, but as I mentioned before, because of that grade 2 titanium case, it is very comfortable on the wrist. Now the watch also has a 52mm lug to lug, which means top to bottom. So you might want to try this watch out in a boutique. You could even try the regular production to find out if it's the size that will fit your wrist. Now finally, the watch has a thickness of 13mm, which isn't slim by any stretch of the imagination, but it is pretty slim for a dive watch. It definitely won't slide under any cuff easily, but we weren't expecting that with a Thule dive watch, but 13mm thick makes it quite comfortable on the wrist. Now allow me to talk about something a little controversial, and that is that creamy loom you see on the watch. Now in the watch world, we tend to call that faux patina. I like the look as it gives it kind of a vintage aesthetic to it, and don't get me wrong, I know brands do this to try to mimic vintage watches, but I tend to look at it as creamy loom rather than faux patina because it gives it kind of a nice warm aesthetic, a Thule aesthetic at that, and if they went with regular loom, it wouldn't have the same personality in my honest opinion, so I tend to look at it as creamy loom rather than faux patina. So there has been a few changes that might suggest this isn't the best Seamaster out there. For example, the bezel isn't ceramic, it's aluminum. 
Yes, that is in fact a downgrade and Omega could have easily created a matte ceramic bezel similar to the Tudor Pelagos. But they wanted the bezel and the dial to fade with time, which is why they went with aluminum. Personally, I would have preferred a matte ceramic bezel, but I get it. Having that bezel fade into a ghostish gray will look pretty cool. Now another little small change they did is the crystal is no longer flat, but instead they went with a slightly domed crystal to keep within the vintage aesthetics, which I kind of like with this watch. Now Omega decided to go with an all sandblasted matte case rather than having any polishing to the case, which is actually a really good thing in my opinion. If they had any polishing, it would have taken away from the aesthetic they were going for. Having that matte case definitely gives it that military inspired look. Now when taking a look at the case back, there's a lot of numbers, but what I feel is the most important is the 007 obviously and the number 62, which actually signifies the very first Bond movie that came out in 1962. Now of course, when it comes to dive watches, loom shots are really important. For anyone that stuck around this long, thank you so much for sticking around. Please consider liking the video and here's a little sneak peek for you guys if you want to know anything about this watch, add it in the comment section below.